he said papa i don't know why i'm not successful and it is not working a pastor talking like that so i asked him are you a businessman or a politician he said no i'm a man of god i said what is not working i said i don't understand because what you're speaking is strange to my ears what do you mean by it is not working do you mean that the word of god is not working he said no what i mean is that i am not successful in ministry i say what is the yardstick what yardstick are you using to measure it he was quiet because he knew i was getting at at something important i said i know your problem you think making it in ministry is car you know um, um escort car pilot car and then a big jeep in between you know a big house and church with crowd making it i said that's wrong that's not the way ministerial success is measured what is the way ministerial success is measured a minister who is successful is a laborer in word and doctrine finish once you teach the word and you're sound in your teaching you're a successful minister it's not measured by things if success in ministry is measured by crowd what about across the river where there are fishermen that must be pastored and in the whole village there are only 50 and a pastor has to live there and pastor them forever so that means that man's church even if the whole village join his church they can never be more than 50. is he not a success if he goes to that village and he has 30 members out of 50 his church is bigger than churches in cities if a city has a church of over 14 million people and he has 10,000 members he is not as successful as that man pastoring in a city of 50 30 members so we don't measure ministerial success by crowd we don't measure ministerial success by car influence and affluence we are not businessmen and we are not politicians ministerial success is measured by soundness in doctrine and when you start teaching people sound doctrine even if they are four and they grow in the knowledge of christ you're successful that's why jesus said his church is where two are that's the church of jesus that's the church of jesus two or three gathered in my name i'm there that's the church of jesus but you know we human beings we have brought worldliness into the church so we use the yardstick that unbelievers use to measure success we brought it into the house of god which is why some young pastors are under pressure and some of them go to native doctors to collect things and use it to be pulling crowd so you don't respect a man of god because of his cars you respect him because of what is coming out of his mouth you check his doctrinal weight that's what determines respect it's not the crowd it's not the houses and the cars those are not the things that make ministry if success in ministry is by wealth no pastor is successful let me tell you the most carnal man on earth is a man that respects a man of god because of his wristwatch and his suit and his car you are as carnal as carnality can be real spirituality is to respect men that labor bible say they that labor in word and doctrine deserve double honor then he say esteem them highly for their work sake not for their car sake and that's why preachers feel when you just have big cars you know big cars and you have bodyguards you have escort and pilot cars when you enter everywhere as you're coming out your protocol they're pushing everybody down pushing everybody down so that the man of god can come out the man of god and then you see him feeling cool as they are pushing people down the same people you are supposed to disciple and build up they are pushing them down and you are happy people are desperate because they have told them ministerial success is car and house let me be honest listen to me every one of you when i came into ministry pastors were not anything to talk about to even marry if anybody agreed to give you their daughter is the grace of god because when i joined ministry the best of pastors were using bicycles most were trekking there were not many pastors that had car so i didn't come into ministry for money and fame and popularity i came into ministry with a raw passion to teach people the word of god and help people
That's all that brought me to ministry. That's all. And I didn't join ministry at old age. I entered ministry as a young boy. With all my potentials to be as successful as anybody in the secular. But I chose to consecrate that for ministry. It's not about houses and cars. It's not about all of that. The true minister is a teacher of the word of God. What have you been through? What have you survived? My story, his call, with God's servant Eric Obeng is a program designed to encourage servants of God in the ministry. Guests tell their life experiences from childhood to the point where God called them into the ministry, the challenges and oppositions they face. Ministry is not for lazy people. I wanted to be a medical doctor. And I'm glad my mom didn't abort me. Huh? But in all of it, we're more than conquerors. <laughs> I felt, um, I felt this, this if, I, if I quit it, I didn't know how I was really gonna survive and how far the Lord by His grace has brought them. There's a difference between church and being born again. So if God didn't send you there, you sent yourself, and then you're going to have a hell of a time, you know, being in that ministry. Mistakes are made, and then how you choose your leadership. You really, really take your time and pray and be very convinced. Praying for them to be healed, and God worked miracles. Mm. The enemy is smart, and I always say that he will get you at your most vulnerable. Mm. It takes the power of God. My Story, His Call is broadcast live on Facebook, YouTube, and the Word and Spirit Network Radio with your host, God's servant, Eric Obeng. Follow and subscribe for life-changing encounters. This is time that we want to be encouraged. This is time that we want to have fellowship in the law my story his call one call many great stories hallelujah 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 <laughs> Wow, family, loved ones all over the world. Yes, you know what time is it? It is my story, his call time. Let us invite people. Let them know that, hey, it is another day, another Saturday in that beautiful month, in the month of August. And uh, we are gathered to talk about love. We are gathered to talk about ministry. We are gathered to talk about everything pertaining to life. And uh, my goodness. With me in the virtual studios is one great man of God. You know, you know, you know it already. You know what I'm about to say. Come on now. You know, we don't just parade any other person, but we bring people that can teach us. I mean, who can teach us? They can let us know what ministry is all about. And uh, without wasting much time, we want to add him to the feed. But I want you to do me a very good favor. Uh, a uh, great favor. I want you to take your device. Let us invite friends. Let us welcome people to this broadcast. And I believe your life and my life will never be the same. We are live on the Facebook, live on YouTube. We are connected to Twitter. And we are also on the radio so that you and I will be blessed. So let me add my guest to the feed and let's set the ball rolling. Wow, wow, wow. Bishop. Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, let me see. Yeah, okay. Aha, uh -huh, wow. Yes, now I can hear you now. Wow, what a wonderful day. What a beautiful time to have fellowship uh, with you. Wow. And uh, some of us, we've been watching, we've known you quite some time now, but it is time to, in fact, have one-on-one -on -one with you. And the management team of my story is called, I want to say a very big thank you for availing yourself. I know you are very, very busy. Wow doing Thank the you. work down there but you've made time to have fellowship with us i want to say thank you and thank you again thank you thank you very much Reverend wow viewers as you can see ah he's fired up and we are here to know him so let's start by knowing you who is for the sake of this question and i will say this for the sake of my first question let me put the bishop aside and let's get into the genesis of who you are. Who is Kwame Ampofo? 
Where did you grow up? How did life begin? Walk us into that journey, please. Well, I'm I'm Kwame Girinchi, I'm Pofu. Um, I was born in 1971, second of January, so that makes me 51 years old. Wow. And uh, born to the late Godfrey Ampofu of blessed memory, uh, who was an outstanding quantity surveyor and a very devout Presbyterian. And my mother, she's still alive, Janet Ampofu. She lives in Mampong, Ikwapem. Um, two wonderful people who gave birth to six of us and wow. brought us up as devout Presbyterians. I attended Pesek. Presbyterian Boys Secondary School at Lagon okay. uh, from 1982 to 1989. I was there, I did my O and A levels there. It was a very, um, that was a formative part of my life. And from there, I proceeded to the School of Engineering, okay. who I studied civil engineering and qualified as a civil engineer. And from there, I moved on to um, work with a few companies. I ended up with the Ghana Highway Authority in 1997 okay. and was with them until 2006 when I resigned to come and work full time for Light Up Apple International. Wow. So, for how I'm long also, have you been? I'm married. I left that one out. I'm married. <laughs> my wife, my wife is uh, and she's a medical doctor. She's also a pastor working oh, wow. uh, with me in Light House. And we have three wonderful children, um, David, Rima, and Joseph. Wow, so that's, that's wonderful. That's, yeah. Powerful. So let's look at this. So how many years now? Hey. <laughs> 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 that's good five years ago. <laughs> wow. Wow. Been five years ago, we are tied the knots um, in Achimota School. That's where we had a wedding ceremony. It was 11th of October. Of course, I can never forget that date. Mm. And this year, 11th of October, will be exactly 25 years of marriage. 25 years of marriage? Yes, please. Wow. That's wonderful. Family, you've seen that? Wow. Yeah, that's big. <laughs> that, that's brilliant. David just graduated. Um, he's the first to graduate in the family. Um, as he did law, so LLB. Oh, wow. Uh, this, in part, this was on the 29th of July. And Rima, uh, I call her my only daughter, MOD, and she's studying um, business administration in Legon. And Johnny is about to write his O levels. Wow. <laughs> what a beautiful family. That's so oh, nice. So <laughs> <it's a blessing. laughs> Wow. Uh, wow. Let me see if I can find the uh, doctor here. Yeah, because we've shown the kids. So let's see if I can project wifey. Wow. Let's see. What a beautiful family. You are really blessed, Bishop. You know, you are really yes. blessed. Yes. Wow. Blessed. wow. 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 <laughs> uh, okay. So this was in Singapore. Okay. In 2019, you mm. know, uh, just just a couple of years ago. Wow, wow. So, mommy, wherever you are, I want to say thank you and thank you and thank you again for standing behind uh, Bishop, for standing behind Bishop. It's not easy, you know. Somebody will not understand. But it's not easy having, you know, I mean, going through all those things. Sometimes you have to leave the kids, you know, go to the mission field to work. Then, I mean, if you don't have a strong woman who say that husband, it's okay, yes. go, 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 go. Oh, I'll I, take I, care I, of the rest. I mean, it's not easy. You always need somebody to stand in the gap and help. And I want to say thank you and thank you again. What a beautiful family from Nanaya Barima. Nanaya says that what a beautiful family. I want you to Thank take you. your device and begin to share Thank all over the place. Let's ask welcome Thank people you. to have a, a successful uh, broadcast. Now, Bishop, let me come back to you. You said when you've yes. graduated, you worked for a short time. Then you went into ministry. What what pushed you into that? I mean, what was the idea? I mean, what brought the idea of, I mean, letting go of all that you have learned so many years, then decide that now 
I want to go into the ministry. I mean, what? Well, hello. Please yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you very well. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Well, it, it, all, it all began when God brought me um, into contact with my spiritual father. That's Bishop Dagiwa Mills. He's the genesis of all this. Um, even my conversion, I, even though it wasn't directly connected to him, it came as a result of him converting people who converted others, which led to my conversion. So after school, I ended up going to Lighthouse Chapel. And as I kept listening to this man of God preach and teach, I realized that as a Christian, I'm supposed to bear fruit. I'm supposed to work for God. I'm supposed to do something for the Lord. And so I started as a lay person. I didn't even know that I had a call on my life. But okay. I was there drawn to church. I was drawn to um, coming to church all the time, doing whatever I was asked to do. I was faithful in whatever I was doing. Um, I was giving a few people to look after and all that and it got to a point where i realized that i could do more for the lord and um, an opportunity was given to me and i was finally appointed as a pastor so mm -hmm. i was a civil engineer working um at ghana highway authority at the same time i was also a pastor um i started off at Kolegono working as a um what we used to call the premier pastors these were pastors who uh, fished out people from the congregation who did not belong to any group in church okay. and okay. were sort of busy, so couldn't come to the meeting. So we visited them at home, we fellowship with them, and gradually we ended up drawing most of them into church. As we speak, many of them are even pastors and bishops and also doing their best for the Lord. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you were working... So, and still a pastor then the idea yes, of good so how was trying to combine you know uh the work of the ministry together with your you know your civil engineering job how were you able to balance the two oh it's quite interesting it's all depends on you um what you want to do because the strongest thing on this earth mm. is mm. the will is your own will because nobody can override it God can't override your will. Okay. The devil cannot okay. override your will. If the devil could override our will, we would not have come to the Lord. You okay. know? So if you take a decision that I want to serve the Lord, and as I serve the Lord, he's giving me this secular profession to sustain me, then everything suddenly becomes possible. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So That's right. As a, as a lay pastor, I realized that I'm doing the real work. That's the work of God. Okay. But at the same time, I must support myself. So okay. God has blessed me. I'm an engineer. Mm. So I'm working as an engineer to support myself to do mm. the work of the ministry so that the mm. church does not have to pay me, you know, because if you look at um, a church like Lighthouse, we work with so many lay pastors. If each mm. of them is demanding salary, we can never do anything as a church. But other people who are not in ministry also have time to do other things. They join all these other clubs, join their tribal associations, do all sorts of things apart from the work they do. So it's okay. a matter of how you manage your time and what you consider as important. Anything that you consider as priority, you will definitely make time for it because That's right. 24 hours a day belongs to you. You mm. can choose to sleep eight hours or sleep three hours. Mm. You can choose to watch soccer. You know, you can watch soccer for three hours. The discussion That's right. and everything. And at the end of the day, so these three hours, you could also have gone on visitation. That's right. You could also have cared for the flock. You could also have prepared yourself to teach. That's right. Preach, you know, mm. and we have many politicians who also still have their profession, but they are fully into politics. Okay. You have doctors. They are practicing doctors, but they are also politicians. They mm. find time. So when it comes to the Lord, we feel that you should be able to also do the work of the Lord, which is basically, I'm not saying it's not 
something difficult to do, but it's basically praying for the sheep, visiting them, teaching and counseling them, and interacting with them, which in Lighthouse, we have thought that many of us can do that in addition to whatever business we're doing. Yeah. Wow. 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 This is so lovely. I can see some beautiful comments coming the uh, way through the Facebook. It says, thank you, Bishop, for pastoring me from 2018 till now. And this is Nanaya Arima. Wow. I see a free year, free year. Kobina says that a wonderful family. Uh, keep sending your comments and let us know where you are watching us from, you know. Uh, I know people are watching us from so many, many, many places, but let us know by way of, of identification. Then we can also have that on our records. Wow. So, viewers, family, you've heard that. You can still do your civil, sorry, your, 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 your yes, your civil work and still do the work of the ministry. It is doable, you know. I mean, if yes. you have a means of making money to support the ministry, you can also be involved in the work of the ministry you know everybody has been called into the ministry of reconciliation so there is something you can do in the body of christ there's nothing like oh i can't do anything something needs to be done in the body of christ and that is so important when it comes to the work of the ministry wow now let's go straight into the idea of being in the full-time ministry because we've enjoyed what you said trying to do your own work trying to do whatever you are called to do then why the idea of a full-time? Why? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is a step at the time. Okay. I remember before I was appointed in 1999, mm. I used to wonder that can I not just be a shepherd? That's or right. can I just be there without being a pastor? Mm. Then one day I was listening to a message being preached by Bishop Dan. Interestingly, he was even talking about the Christian family. Okay. And he said something which was quite interesting. I mean, he was just reading the Bible in Genesis chapter 4. And okay. what he said was that he, he read about um, the first family. that Adam knew his wife Eve and she gave yeah. birth to Cain. And then he knew her again and then she gave birth to Abel. Now the next verse said that Abel was a keeper of sheep. Okay. But Cain but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And okay. it just hits me like that. When you read that scripture, the word but shows that the two mm. professions were put in contrast. And one was the opposite of the other. Or one was okay. higher, the other was lower. Mm. That's how I do it. You know, and I took note that they didn't talk about the profession of the firstborn, but rather the secondborn. That's okay. Abel. Genesis 4. He said, Abel was a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. So I just thought that was tilling of the ground. Tilling of the mm. ground is what you are doing, sweating. Mm. You know, that, that's what they said. You sweat as you till the ground till you die. And then what was keeping of sheep? Keeping of sheep is what Jesus wants us to do. He says, Simon Peter, if you love me, then please keep my sheep. Wow. So it was also no wonder to me that Abel sacrificed seem to please God more. And I said to myself that I think keeping of sheep, that's being a pastor, is superior to me being a civil engineer. So being a civil engineer is not useless at all. As of now, I still do construction for the Lord. Oh, okay. I mean, oh, okay. I'm, wow. Oh, yeah. I'm not, my tools are not down at all. It's just that I'm oh. assigned to do things. I've been sent by the church to go to Guinea to build, to Guinea, to Cameroon, to all sorts of places to build, you know. So the civil engineering is being used to further the gospel directly. That, that's, that's what's going on. So when I got that revelation, then I became open to the call of God that, yes, I think I must be a pastor. And wow. I was appointed a pastor. And as I, as I kept on going, I remember listening to a camp message called All Out. Hmm. Yes, the title even says it all. <laughs> the family was just pushing me. Everything Bishop Dad was saying was just pushing me that, look, we, we don't really have so much time to leave. So if there's the opportunity to serve the Lord in that capacity, why not? So I remember in um, November 2005, 
we're having a convention. It was, it was the homecoming convention. And um, I attended the morning se sessions. And one day, I just felt the Lord tell me to just go and ask this man, beg him for him to give you something to do with your life. You know, so my application letter, I call it an appeal letter. It was more of an appeal that I'm prepared to do anything they will ask me to do if I have that opportunity. And, you know, I've been back and forth previously. You know, my brother was already working full-time then. My wife was already working full-time. I was seen as somebody who wanted to remain lay forever. But the conviction had become so strong. So, um, Bishop waited for a while. That was November 2005. And somewhere in March 2006, I was just called and said, okay, there's an opening. If you, are, if you want to come, um, get ready and come. And okay. actually, when I came... Yes, that's my other brother, the Archbishop. <laughs> I, I mean, I've followed him everywhere, and, and I'm happy wow. I've followed him. So, I, I came, and then I was initially put in the media department to learn how to edit videos and do other stuff like that. So, I was there doing it, then I was shifted to um, the books. To go and work on the books how to okay. get the books distributed and then in august of 2006 i was invited to join the healing jesus advanced team where wow. i've been working um i've been working there from that time till now wow so if you look at when you decided to let go not let go per se but decided to go straight or full time into um, your field like or working God. in the church, yes. How many years would you want to count? How, how long has it been? That was 2006, so that makes it 16 years. 16 years. Wow. Yes. And you are now one of the crusade directors of Healing Jesus campaign. Yes, please. Um, wow. I'm privileged to um, one of, um, wow. I think we are about 18, 18, if I'm not wrong, 18 crusade directors, yes. 18 crusade directors in, in all wow 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 family let's watch this two clips or videos we'll come back then we will we'll ask bishop some questions about how all those things have been organized you know sometimes we see the crusade being done and let's see you know uh if we talk about crusades in especially in africa the only person that comes in mind is Ryan Bonkin. That's what people yes. know. Yeah, I mean, yes. when it comes to Africa, all of that, that is who we know, you know. So if you look at what he did before, you know, Lord calling him home, and look at what is being done by Prophet Bishop Ducky Ward Mills, you could tell that there is this anointing. But we have somebody who goes in to prepare the ground before bishop even comes in to put things together <laughs> and that's what we want to look at because you know sometimes we see it i mean people have gathered with a miracle salvation people receiving the lord and we are happy but there is somebody who goes in there is the john the baptist who goes to prepare the ground and uh for jesus to come in and come and do the work so let's watch this short video then we will channel our questions to that side then we'll see what the lord will teach us so let's watch this first
Say Jesus. Thank you for tonight. Say, oh Jesus. oh Jesus, tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Have mercy on me. I have done many bad things. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Wash me, Lord Jesus, with your blood. Please write my name. In the book of life, my name is. Let me see your name. My name is. Please write this name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. And everybody shout, Amen! Wow, wow, this is so beautiful. This is so nice. Now, let's get into what goes into that. But first of all, as a crusade director for the Healing Jesus Crusade, to the layman, how would you describe your responsibilities? I mean, what do you do? Just give us some background responsibilities of what you do as a bishop in charge of that. I mean, as one of them, what do you do? Tell me. Well, um, first of all, I want to give all the glory to God. Um, and I just want to say it's a great honor done me by my father, mm. Evangelist Dagiwa Mills. When it comes to the crusade, we refer to him as Evangelist Dagiwa Mills because he's working fully in the office of an evangelist. And you can clearly see that the anointing on mm. right hand bonky at work for the crusades we just saw over there are just like what uh, Evangelist Bonke used to do whilst he was alive. And um, I know that he he's, he's followed him. And we are also admirers of that ministry. And as crusade directors, um, you know you know that Bonke's, Evangelist Bonke's crusade director, his main crusade director is a Ghanaian called oh, Reverend really? Oh, wow. yes, he's a Ghanaian. We've met him, we adore him. He's wow. he's a master strategist. Mm. Yes, we've learned a lot from him. And um, basically what the crusade director does is that he's sent ahead. You know, it's 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 important to know that you have been sent. You are an ambassador, you present the interest of the sending party. And here the sending party is your evangelist. So you go into a city. And um, if you want to have a crusade of this magnitude, it must involve almost every church that you can okay. get. Basically, okay. the crusade director goes to um, try to collaborate with all the churches and bring them together. And then after that, he also calls on the authorities of the place. That's the governmental powers and also um, those who are... Uh, important in society in the place and okay. then also needs to also bring to the attention of the general public that okay. a blessing of this nature is coming their way so it's basically these three things that crusade director has to do um, okay. to ensure that by the time that the this evangelist as as this evangelist arrives um the city is waiting to hear what God has for them. That's wow. that's that, that's the work of crusade director. In wow. in the secular world, you can liken us to campaign managers. For example, if a political um, party is having a rally, 
the people they don't just appear. That's right. Somebody must go there to gather everybody yeah. an invitation for the person to come and address the people. Okay. Okay. So we do that. We do it um, for the sake of the kingdom, mm. and um, we follow strongly. When I say we, I'm speaking about my colleagues um, who okay. all work with healing Jesus. The peculiar thing about the Healing Jesus Crusade directors is that we are all children of the evangelists. Okay. Okay. Yes, we are. We are not necessarily just employees. Like we had a skill, and they came to call us, come and do this. No, we knew nothing. So okay. everything you see are procedures and steps developed by the evangelists. God okay. has really given that man such wisdom, and okay. the instructions are also simple. But when you do them, the effect is what we see okay. over there. Yes. Wow. So for somebody like Evangelist that he was Mills, it's so nice working with him because God is with him. And mm. no matter how tough the situation looks like, you know mm. that at the end of the day, everything will be pulled off. You know? So it's, it's been great. Mm. I've been doing this for 15 years now. 16 good years. <laughs> Wow. wow that's why i've done it longer almost hmm. years. Yes, wow I have, yes some who are senior to say directors yes wow <laughs> family it's so amazing you know bishop kept mentioning you know ryan bonkin's name you know he mentioned his crusade director who happened to be a Ghanaian. wow mr yeah, Darko. Reverend Darko. wow yes. Reverend Darko. wow yeah. now let's watch something from ryan bonkin's crusade and let us look at exactly the picture that is trying to portray to us the anointed you know walking in that steps let's watch this and we'll continue We all need a savior, and his name is Jesus. He wants to walk hand in hand with you. Are you happy? Today is your day of salvation. Now is your time of salvation. This week is your week of salvation. If you believe that tonight, shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, you may come here as weak as can be. You will go home like a conqueror with Jesus inside of you. Hanging on the cross, my friends, he took the punishment for your sins and the punishment for my sins. What is that?
tonight, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Wow, so powerful. <laughs> um, I don't know if you noticed, mm. but each of these crusades with the show, which mm. are their top crusades, were in Nigeria. Okay. And, and Evangelist Bonky also has a number of crusades directed. Some of them are okay. East Africans and others. But okay. all these crusades you saw were mm. done by Reverend Dako. Reverend John wow. Darko. Yes. Wow. So in the world of crusade directorship, he's he is what you might call a godfather, he's a guru. He's, he's wow. a major diplomat. Yes. Wow. So nice. In fact, I'm really blessed. In fact, to organize this family is not easy. It's not easy. Now, I want us to come to the practical. Now, the first two. Uh, videos that we played were direct, I mean, you were in charge of those. Am I right? Those no, two. I was in charge of them. I was in charge of the first one. That's Rundu, okay. Namibia. The second Namibia. one was, in, was was done by another crusade director. That was okay. in Kulu, so, Uganda. Okay. So which one were you in charge of? Uh, the Rundu. The, the first one. Namibia. Rundu. You, you, I mean, you could barely make out the difference. Oh, you were in um, let, let, let me just say one thing here. Okay. Those pictures taken of um, Reinhard Bonke's Nigeria crusade was 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 not taken in the era of drones. Wow! Can you? I mean, can you explain that? I mean, <laughs> yeah. So to get the crowd shot, you need to climb some high towers okay and try okay. to take them but today if that same crusade mm. they had drones to take mm, it okay. the crowd would look even more spectacular that's right that's right that's more right spectacular, you know but now we have drones you can fly over them and it, it gives you a certain feeling you that's know that's right but to say i mean it was it was a good crowd we're grateful to god for that but Amen. those crowds in nigeria are massive and if you had a drone camera doing justice to it, it would be awesome. Yes, it would be <laughs> awesome. So we hope to get there. We are praying. Nigeria is a place on our hearts. Um, okay. We went there in 2010. So far, our largest crusade ever was in Kwara State, a place called Offa. 
Nigeria. Wow. Wow. Yes, for one single night, we had over 500,000 people in attendance. It was just Five. like a sea of people. Wow. Yeah. But we didn't have drones. We would have okay. shots which look spectacular. We tried to try right. them. You know, wow. uh huh. We left there because of these Boko Haram issues. And That's right. Uh, we, we intend to go back again. And mm. I, I believe we'll have some crusades in some of these places because it's been so many years since those crusades were held. And we'd love to, we'd love to have crusades in, in Nigeria. Nigeria wow. is a wonderful place. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's see some of the comments coming. I think now. Um, your sons and daughters are trooping in. That's what I can see. I see the <laughs> says, Wow, Bishop Kapos, you are a blessing. This is coming from Thank Esther. You. I see my father, Bishop Kwame for What a blessing! I wow, is wow. Esther Bishop is all the way in another country, so it's a time you know to have fellowship. We've seen him by way of technology today, and this is coming from Maswell. Maswell says, Powerful. And this is coming from New Life. New Life says, uh, wow. Then uh, New Life Bauer says, wow. This is what men of God are to do. Yes, I agree. Wow. Vincent also says that learning. In fact, we're all learning. In fact, it's a blessing to have Bishop on the platform to teach us. Now, now let's go back to the video that we watched. I want to just walk us through. You got the information from Bishop or the you got information from the evangelist uh bishop kwame we are going to such a country tell us what because went... it, because it happens so the team we we sit with uh the the personal assistant to the evangelist and okay. he he tells us that okay i mean bishop wants to go to namibia okay so we look at the towns in Namibia, and to be frank with you, so we are assigned some of those towns. I've never heard their names before. Mm -hmm. I mean, Rundu is at the very top of Namibia. Never heard of the place before. And um, I arrived there about four weeks to time. And it's not a very big town. And um, the pastors, they are wonderful people. They are easy to convince. Okay. They know a good thing when they see it. Mm -hmm. And God has given Bishop Dag a good name, not just in Ghana, but mm -hmm. almost everywhere I go, there are people who know him, read his books, have been blessed, and mm -hmm. they know that he has something to offer in the ministry okay. work that they are doing. So that makes your work less difficult. At least you have something you are offering. The man is coming. He wants to have a crusade with you. You also have a conference where it's going to teach you and your church leaders how to do ministry in this Africa setting because he is somebody who started like most of them in a classroom right. and right. has progressed even to the extent that he can come with his tracks, equipment, mm. and have to say just like Bonky is doing. And we have churches to many of these places. So when you meet the pastors, um, because... I believe that God has given the man of God a good name and we have something to offer. They 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 sort of um compromise their programs, sounds, reschedule just to make way for all this, and then they come together. Now, okay. the moment the body of Christ comes together mm. and you have the permission and the blessing of the government, the That's rest right. is just given publicity. You put okay. up posters, bars. You make you make a lot of noise, okay. you know, to create that expectation, and then okay. on that day, I believe that the Lord Himself also draws them. That's right. Let's, because most of the time we look and we cannot really even take um, the glory for what is happening because mm. it's like even how many people did we see in the town? Mm. And at that, at times, more people attend than the population of the town where the crusade is being held. And oh, okay. I know that natural force also comes into play. Mm -hmm. So there's the, there's the part that we do as men, which is very important. Um, it's basically to just make everybody feel honored. As okay. we speak, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to meet every pastor I can find. 
mm. trying to make them feel important, which they are, mm. trying to make them feel honored, and asking them to be part of what we are doing. Okay. If you are able to do that, then the pastors will involve themselves and their church members. That's right. Because if you look at a crowd like that, so many people give their lives to Christ, follow up is a mammoth task. You need a That's right. Customer. That's the right. Pastors come to all their churches. Mm. I'm sure you saw some barristers dancing. That's right. Robes. They are not from lighthouse churches. What we do is that we have the ropes. Okay. And then when we go, they bring all their qualities. So this church has five members. This one has eight. This one has 40. We bring okay. them all together. We give them the rope. And what we do is that we have some songs by um, Pago Sisters, Daughters of Glorious Jesus. And okay. yes, we have those songs and we translate them into their language and they sing them at the crusade. And who does that? I mean, do you consult their group? Their music director, so I mean, is there anybody within oh, the we, camp of? We have a music director. Okay. She, I don't know exactly how she does it, but she's okay. able to get all the songs translated. So, for example, here in Rwanda, she has she's translated the songs into Rwanda already. Already. So, yes. So I'll give it to them. Hmm. And they will sing wherever they are, when it's time we gather them all together, they will sing, and she will lead. So what okay. we do is that we don't we don't use individual groups or performers at our crusades because we want a symbol of unity. So it's like That's this right. huge choir you are seeing is possible simply because all the pastors of all these people have agreed and come together. Okay. And our music director, she's called Sister Vivaldi, and uh, she's an excellent performer. She will sing, she sings, she finds tunes when she comes finally. She fine tunes her accent. And okay. we, we traveled all over Africa. We sang these same songs. When you hear them, the language is different, but you know the song already. That's you right. Know? Yeah, so like, um, <laughs> me wo yesu, me wo yesu. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> but that one in, in, in Rwanda is Fite Yesu. Okay. You know, so when you are meeting them and you sing it, they're so touched. They are, they are shocked. Ah, this is a very beautiful song. It's in That's the right. They've not heard it before. Mm. And it's so simple. It's about Jesus. And they, they, it just opens them up. You know, and all these are wisdom keys from the evangelist. Wow. You know, and all these are ways to get into the heart of the people and get mm. them together. So one of the testimonies of our crusades is that on stage you find many men of God who did not used to like relate with each other now coming That's together, wow. you know, and it's our aims that will never be a place where the body of Christ will be fragmented because of our That's right. That's you know, right. and we want it to be united as, as, as we are there. Wow, that's so beautiful. But I'm really touched. You know, I'm following through every bit of statement that you are making. And I can easily see that this is the doing of the law. So when you step in, I love what you said. You try to organize the pastors in the country. So once you are successful in doing that, then they would also relay it to the church members in a way to mobilize or bring them together to the crusade. So it's like everybody is involved. Those in the technical men does their work. The publicity also does their work. Then finally, Bishop steps in. Now, let's get into challenges. I believe that in every field, there are challenges. What are some of the challenges that you guys go through? Share with us. Um, the challenges, mm. the, yes, there are quite a number of challenges. Um, the greatest challenge is when the pastors don't get a hug mm. or they don't see the eye to eye with you. Um, for us, we know the heart of our father, the evangelist, mm. that he wants to preach the word of God in this land. So, no matter how it is, we have to find a way to get these people together, you know. And someone once cracked a joke that it's easier to deal with demons because you can just bind them. That's right. But pastors, you can't buy pastors. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, so 
for me, if you ask me, that's the greatest challenge. At that, okay. the next challenge are various city authorities. Mm. You know, different cities, different bylaws, bylaws mm. of publicity, what you can mm. do, what you cannot do. Okay. You know, and the more nicer and refined the city, the more challenging it is to do your publicity. Because publicity at times is akin to vandalism. Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. look at Accra. Look at mm. Accra posters. Posters everywhere. Events which are long past. Are still there. Plastic everywhere. And mm. the bridging, it's, it's nasty. And people leave banners. Program has long gone. The banner mm. has collected. Dead. It's, it's so terrible. That's you know, right. but but if you organize a community place like that, um, it's easy. You can also do more. But when mm -hmm. you go to an organized place, I remember when we went to South Africa first. Mm. I was in a town called Toyando. As usual, I never heard a name before till I was assigned to the place. <laughs> and they told us they would not allow us to put our posters. Mm. So we had to go to this man in the um, compliance office of the municipality to try and go and ask him for a favor. When we read there, he told, me, he told me and my team that my name is Molandoli. And in my language, it means the one who refuses, the one who says no. <laughs> I said, wow, what are we going to do? That's right. That we had, but in the end, he allowed us to do some publicity. You know, for some of them, you have to sign, um, you have to sign an agreement or deposit okay. money. Finish, you clean up. Oh, you okay. know, yeah. Those some of those things are the main challenges. The authorities, if the authorities give you the blessing, they give you the field, um, mm. you explain the publicity, they allow you to do it. It's 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 it makes things a bit easy. But there are some places that challenge it will restrict you. Um, mm. For example, my current assignments, they are not going to allow me to use posters. I okay. mean, he, he, you don't even have to ask. If you ask it to create them, you must you must visit Rwanda. Okay. It's the most That's right. That's right. Mm. That's it's right. Neat. It's, mm. it's very neat. If mm. you yourself, can you yourself to, to, to put starch on the wall and then wow. put it's never to leave again. You can't do that. You know, so wow. you have to find different things um, to do your publicity. As as we speak, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> exactly what to do. But what I know is that by the time we have the crusade, we don't mm. have a very good crusade. In Rwanda, Bishop Dag has a very good name. He's been a blessing to many of your pastors. He's okay. among um, one of the few pastors who has translated his books into okay. their language. Oh, and the wow. average book reads Kinyawanda more than okay. anything. That's their language, that's their top language, that's, that's everything. Right. I read this picture from. This one, I was on a covert mission. You see in the okay. background, you see, mm. I was on a covert. I was on a covert mission. All right. See, so what is that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, what were you doing? Explain that to the, I mean, to the layman. Look behind me. In the background, you see a huge mosque. That's right. <laughs> so, so that, that's a Muslim-dominated town. Okay. It's called Dagwa. Okay. It's a Muslim-dominated town. The Muslims and the Muslim Catholics. Okay. And um, this was in 2013. Dalwa is in Cote d'Ivoire. And this, to me, was my best crusade uh, in mm. terms of the flow of the people, not the numbers. Okay. I've had crusades where the people who came were more. But in terms of the flow of the pastors, the Muslims, mm. the Catholics, everything was so good. So I had an appointment with the chief imam. <laughs> so I dressed, I dressed like this. I had my rosary in my hand. Okay. And, and I think I had a skull cap on. If, if my eyes are not uh, deceiving me. So I, 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 I asked a Muslim to lead me to him. 
That's right. That, that, that's what we normally do when we want to um, engage our brothers. We want to bring down any suspicion because okay. we are just there to preach the word of God and pray for the sake. That's right. Um, we are not there to come and um, have conflict with them. So um, I just come from seeing him. He had given his blessing to the crusade. You know, I, I, I told him that he's, he's an opinion leader there, a spiritual and great opinion leader that um, he cannot be dead. It's not God who has put him there. So as we are coming there, and we just want him to be aware of what we are coming to do and also ask for his blessing so that we can have it in peace. Because oh, if wow. they, decide, they decide that they will not let you have peace, you can't have your crusade in peace. So the you know? reason for going in, Bishop, is not to, let's say, try and convert some of the Muslims Absolutely. into Christian. Oh, the idea Absolutely. is to seek your permission that we are about to have Absolutely. something in your, in your hometown or in your country or in your area. It's basically to have peace. Oh, wow. It's basically to have peace. I, I remember when we went to the north of Ghana to one of the towns. Um, mm. If Imam actually came for the medical outreach and he wow. sent a delegation, I'm talking of a major chief Imam, and he sent okay. a delegation to the crusade every night, you know, and many of their people came and were healed. Oh, they great. were healed. You can see the Muslim. Then the evangelist will ask, Who healed you? He said, Jesus. Oh, you know, wow. and, and wonderful wisdom, you know, so that's also part of the wisdom that the evangelist has given to this ministry. Okay, okay, yeah. so you try to make peace with everybody to set the well, I mean, yeah, the tone moving right. You keep so, honor, you keep mm -hmm. honor to who honor is due, that's and when right. you do that, it opens every door, you know. Wow, okay. let me ask you my last question, then I'll let you go because of other engagements as well what about spiritual yeah. attacks i mean spiritual things <laughs> fight <laughs> do you encounter all those because i mean let's just say that you are coming to some of this territory you know so you know there's so much into this tell us do we have certain are those things real in organizing such crusades as I, I, I said this to the glory of god Hmm. This is my testimony. I'm not saying it's like that for everyone. Okay. But for me, for these 16 years, I've been away doing all this stuff. Hmm. Um, for some reason, I'm, I've never fallen sick out there. I've never okay. had food poisoning. Okay. I've, I've, I've never had situations back at home. Hmm. Um, the pictures you showed at the beginning, my children... God seems to have taken care of them during my long periods of being away. And I, I cracked a joke earlier on. Um, I don't want to crack it again. But mm. at times, I think that we already have enough on our hands. Mm. So the Lord protests us from uh, maybe wizards and all those kind of things. Because <laughs> if you ask me, I'm, I'm, I'm really not afraid of those ones. Those ones can be deflected by prayer. But the real problems... Mm. You can break them. That's you right. Know, they, they have been my challenges. Like you go to a place, you see a major denomination who don't, do not want to have anything to do with anybody. But wow. your work will have more relevance and significance if they're on board. So okay. the art of praying and then diplomatically getting into their heart, those, those are sort of the, the, the main challenges. Okay. Um, up to now, we still not had an accident. We've driven thousands of kilometers. That mm. times we've driven from Zambia to Rwanda, or we've driven from Uganda to Zambia, driven all over South Africa. But God has delivered us. Mm. I mean, I'm sure we are covered by the prayers of the evangelists and by the mercies of God. But um, up to now, we've not encountered that. And and we drive a lot, so we actually also have driving strict driving regulations okay. which are all you see i told you about the little little things that the evangelist was trust us that we are supposed to do but they okay. seem to be protecting us mm. you know we are not we are drive above a certain um a speed limit um we actually have an office in a crowd monitoring us oh wow. we, have an app, we have an app which shows you know so you'll be questioning all those checks are there Wow. You know, to save and deliver us from all these things. 
Wow, so beautiful, so beautiful. Wow, I see this coming from Vincent. Vincent, can you share this on your Facebook page? We have Bishop um, and interacting with us. So, Vincent, that is what I, I, I we are asking of you. Kindly share. Then, I Esther, think. please do that. Esther, take your device, share to your Facebook page, all your Facebook groups, the group that you belong to, all the WhatsApp group. This is a learning, you know, this is a learning. Uh, for all of us, you know, it is the work of the ministry. I see this coming from Henry, Henry Ophrim Paul. says that, wow, 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 wonderful. Henry, please also share and keep your comment coming through. You see, you could tell that Bishop had missed all of you. You could tell. If oh. I project the name, then he tends to wave. <laughs> wow. Uh, who is this? Who is this? Oh, he's one of the pastors who serve under me. We are all in our own church. Oh, you, Pastor Eugene, I know him. I know him. Oh. Yeah, he yeah he moved to Alexandria. Then that uh, I said, oh sorry, see I said <laughs> he moved to Shalibuche. <laughs> then he was oh, okay. sent to he was sent to uh thing Majo area. Oh wow, yeah. With with uh with Reverend uh Reverend Hogri 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 then. Okay. Yeah, when okay. we were all in Adenta, Adenta, okay. they were yeah, sent out to, yeah, before uh, Reverend Kinsley, before Reverend Kinsley came into the scene, wow. and they had to go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. <laughs> when, when Archbishop, when I, when Archbishop came to Adenta in those days, you know, after, after uh, Reverend Jonah, after Reverend Jonah, uh, then uh, Archbishop came, took over the church, over yeah. the, the area, then, yeah, then those distribution came, he was said to come as yeah to partner with uh Reverend uh Hogri. Hogri, yeah, Taiku. Oh. I don't I don't even know oh. Taiku. Okay, yeah, I do. Yeah, Taiku. So they were together and they had to uh send him to Majo, you know, just a few distance away yeah. from Asalupe to also start his yeah. own church. And it's been a while with his wife, oh. and uh yeah, wow, that's wonderful. Wow, Reverend Eugene, God bless you for joining us. It's such an Awesome time with you. I think we have to bring him on board one of these days. Then keep sending in your comments and kindly share. You know, this is wisdom, you know, unfolding. And we have to send those wisdom. You see, anytime I project the name, Bishop begins to wave. <laughs> so Sandra, okay, just say hi. All of you say hi to Bishop. You know, Bishop says, I was <laughs> says, Miss you more, Bishop. And Sarah says that uh, wow, awesome. Then D wow. Michael, too powerful Christian. All that Bishop wants you to do is oh. take your device and share. Oh wow, Bishop, you know. <laughs> that's my assistant. Christian is my oh, assistant. Oh wow, in the it's a one branch, right? In the sound branch. Oh wow. Yes. So let's see. Let's see if we Christian. can get something from the Sawam. In Sawam people, let's see. Let's see you. If you're in the picture, just let us know. As we bring you up, in someone, in someone, in someone, in someone, in someone, people. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. All right. You see, in someone. In someone. There you go. 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 Do you see that? Oh, then this is yeah. coming from Linda. Linda. Linda, where's you? Okay, good. Linda says hi, Bishop. Linda. Wow, Linda Bishop says hi. So this is the Sawam Church, a bishop in charge of this church. So as you can see, it's not just about the crusade. So when it's time for crusade, you move to do the work of the crusade, then you come back and do the other. Yeah. Then you come and do the other works here. Yeah. That is so powerful. So this is what we want you to do as we wrap up. So Bishop, your final words. We know you are very busy. We just took the grace of God to have you here. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Your final words. Yes. So, Eric, I just want to say a big thank you. It's mm. a privilege to also be on this platform. Um, mm. Amongst many servants of God, I'm humbled. I'm deeply honored and privileged. And um, to get an opportunity to talk about myself to mm. the whole world, you have a global audience. And um, I thank God for what um, he's allowed me to be doing now. And I'm even more grateful to for the life of my father, who mm. saw the potential in me and saw that you, you can do this. Go, go and do it. You know? 
That alone yeah. is a blessing. Wow. It, 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 it's a good blessing. I just want to encourage everyone to just continue to serve the Lord. Because mm. I started all this as a Christian who loved the Lord. I loved the Lord. I loved God. I loved church. Some mm. people try to associate um, serving God with being in church. You can't mm. you can't the truth. Every committed Christian must obey Hebrews 10 25. Um, yes, not forget the habit of fellowship. You must also obey the Great Commission, which mm. is not just a call to jealousy, but it's a call to discipleship. And That's you can right. decide people, feed them, feed my sheep mm. is also a call to discipleship. You must That's gather right. the sheep must be found, they must be found, they must be washed, saved, mm. clean. they must be gathered, they must be fed. And mm. Um, Jesus said that this is the way that you will know that you are my disciple, that you bear much fruit. Actually, that's, that's what kapos means. Kapos means fruit. That's right. be fruitful. Without mm. fruit, you are not identifying the realm of the Spirit as a Christian. Mm. And what fruit are we talking about? We are talking about the sheep. And the best place to go and work for the Lord is to join a church. So wow. I just also encourage those who are listening you are not committed to you are not faithful to any church or ministry in particular or not doing anything in gathering all this lost sheep um time is short we must start gathering them you know wow. yeah wow Thank so you. beautiful and this is from my wife to you my wife says we are blessed to have you bishop that is my wife now, yeah that is now kind of being is my wife yeah. Wow. And in fact, Archbishop counseled us when we we're getting married. You know, so oh, really? yeah, we've we've known Bishop for a very long time. At the celebratory, Archbishop counseled that in our in our before we got married. So Archbishop okay. was our counselor. Yeah, in, in Adenta, Adenta all the way. So so many years ago, he was our counselor. Yes. So we are very grateful for having you and uh Bishop, we want to say thank you and thank you and thank you again. In fact, we can't thank you thank now. You. The reason thank being that we have learned a lot. I have learned a lot from this thank broadcast, you. you know, and I believe that God will continue to use you uh, to other places as well. So kindly pray for us. Then we'll let you go. That's our last signature. Pray for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you for this wonderful platform that you ask your servant to start as a means of sharing your grace, your love that has found many of us sinners and turned us into your servants. That even as they watch this program, they'll be encouraged, they'll be inspired to also work for you, serve you, walk in these steps. That one day when we stand before you, we we'll hear well done, good and faithful servants. I thank you, Lord, for this ministry. Lord, bless this ministry. Cause it, Lord, to reach beyond borders into Man. areas where we don't even imagine it or expect it. To reach Man. to foreign lands. To mm. when I say foreign, Lord, I mean Pakistan, all the stands, mm. Iran, mm. all those places where you are causing a hunger, Lord, mm. for 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 people who want to really serve you to also rise up and walk along and be with you. I'm so grateful, Lord, for this time. I just want Amen. to ask God to continue to bless Eric Obey and family and ministry. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus, thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Bishop, sure I want to say thank you so, so much. We'll get in touch and organize the part two because the part two should surely come. Oh, that is where um, it... I just remembered, I didn't speak about my conversion. Uh, yes, I will get into that. So we will get that into to the part two. This because of you know we wanted to talk about the crusade and yes. because you were you were really on the field. That's why I wanted to yes. learn something. So in uh, the part I, I, two, I, 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 just, I just remembered I didn't speak about it. Um, <laughs> get that, that's three minutes. Even though I yeah, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So back in it was a June June fourth. It started mm. on June fourth. But before then, Archbishop had become born again. Mm. And I was doing my national service in Sunyani. And I remember we met at home and we took the bus together. He was an architectural student in Kumasi. So I was going to Sunyani. We sat in the same bus and 
he spoke in tongues throughout. I mean, I was so frightened that ah, so every day it was like, so am I also going to become born again? You know, because this guy has become born again, it means that it's going to affect me. And he spoke in tongues throughout, you know. And before he got down, he told me that he was praying with a friend of his called Kakabaden. I've heard the name, I heard the name so much. He was speaking about him every day. And they said that they have to pray for me because uh, I might even get an accident. Uh, so you people cannot scare me. So, so I proceeded after he got down. I proceeded to Sunyani. When I got out the new plant station, I went to find some food to eat and got myself a bottle of two of beer to ease the tension. That's right. Then I, I went to Sunyani and it was June 4th. And as usual, I have two friends. We always celebrate anything. So June 4th, we went to celebrate. I was 19 years old then, a teenager. And we drank heavily that night. It was so bad. And the next morning, when we woke up, the one of my friends had left the room, went, was going to sit under a summer hut somewhere. You know, and you know him, the great Kokwa Nigo. That was him. Wow. He's going to sit there. So I went. I said, Koku, what's the problem this morning? We're all doing national service then. That's right. They said, the way we are living. Mm. And the night before, the way we call ourselves drunk, we can die and go to hell. So let's go and look for a church and give ourselves to Christ. Wow. So that evening, we went to um, um, Usbeth Hotel. It wasn't built then, but there were some schools there. And some people were meeting in a classroom. And we joined them. It was a church of Pentecost church, which was started there. And after the service, they asked, who are the visitors? And we stood up. And they asked us, where are we from? We said, we live just behind here, but we're looking for a place to give our lives to Christ. <laughs> you know, so I thank God for churches in classrooms. That's right. You know, because they led us to Christ. And that started mm. formally the race. So mm. Archbishop wrote an epistle. Those days, we, we didn't have text messages. So he wrote a letter, I call it an epistle, of what I should do, which Bible, which part of the Bible I should start reading. Wow. And then, who was also in tech, traveled from there and brought me the letter as a baby Christian. Wow. And from there, I picked up. So I followed him all the way to this place. Wow. That explains why you are so close to him. Very close to him. I'm very close to him. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I mean, usually you don't you don't see that. I like it. I like it when people confuse me with him. Exactly. It, I, that my heart so much. They 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 see me and they start addressing me like at the gift myself only. I have people coming to me, posting with me for pictures. And as we are taking the picture, I text <laughs> Are you are you sure you know who you are taking the picture with? I believe you are taking with the Archbishop. They say, yes, Archbishop. I say, I'm not Archbishop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it happens two or three times every day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, it's, it's somebody I adore, I follow. Oh, that's uh, my beautiful. Wife, my youngest son asks that of all my siblings, how come I speak to him every day? Because that's he right. speak in the morning, speak in the afternoon, speak in the evening. <laughs> Wow, yeah. I mean, you are so close. You know, the reason is, I mean, at this age, it should be more of, you know, trying to, you know, go your 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 ways. Then once in a while, you come together. But you are always close, always together. And I see that as something else. That's so beautiful. Wow. Yeah. So I want to thank you and thank you again so that we can allow you to go do the work, you know. But we'll come back again with a part two. The part two is where yes, we get into buddy. more, 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 more wild, 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 wild things and try to connect. Okay. <laughs> thank you and thank you again. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Bye. All right, viewers. This is how far the Lord uh, had brought us as far as this broadcast is concerned. It was such a blessing. And I want to thank you all, you know, for being part of this uh, broadcast. All that I require from you is just take your device. Please take your device and let us share to all platforms. Henry, I see Henry, I see uh, Christian as assistant pastor. Back we see, wow, that's Reverend. Reverend, thank you for joining us. And I want to thank everybody for taking you know time out of your busy schedule to be part of it. I know you can't wait for the part two. I can't wait either. 
everybody who comes to this platform most likely will come for the part two because the first part is kind of introductory where part two will go deeper and go deeper into uh what we've been called to do but again kindly share on all platforms and let us invite people we are also on the youtube we are on youtube go and look for my story his call my story um his call and subscribe to our youtube channel we do this every saturday and we've interviewed so many so many just name there i've interviewed Archbishop, bishop i've interviewed uh a bishop, uh, bishop uh, eddie fabian i've just named them a whole lot and we do this every saturday right after this broadcast there is another broadcast again you see so which means we do this all the time all the time now we see this <laughs> reverend eugene says that we need part two yes we need part two reverend eugene my regards to uh mommy and everybody of Bia, everybody my greetings to everybody i want to say we love you and we thank you so much so let's look at this briefly then we'll call it a day for now there is another broadcast i have two more broadcasts to do uh before we end this but i want you to watch this video to give you an idea of what we do and we do this every saturday day what, what have you been through what have you survived my story his call with god's servant eric obeng is a program designed to encourage servants of god in the ministry guests tell their life experiences from childhood to the point where god called them into the ministry the challenges and oppositions they face ministry is not for lazy people I wanted to be a medical doctor. And I'm glad my mom didn't abort me. Huh? But in all of it, we we're more than conquerors. <laughs> I felt um, I felt this, this if I if I quit it, I didn't know how I was really gonna survive. And how far the Lord by his grace has brought them. There's a difference between church and being born again. So if God didn't send you there, you sent yourself, and then you're going to have a hell of a time, you know being in that ministry. The mistakes are made and then how you choose your leadership. You really, really take your time and pray and be very convinced. Praying for them to be healed and God works miracles. Mm. The enemy is smart. And I always say that he will get you at your most vulnerable. Mm. It takes the power of God. My Story, His Call is broadcast live on Facebook, YouTube, in the Word and Spirit Network Radio with your host, God's servant, Eric Obeng. Follow and subscribe for life-changing encounters. This is time that we want to be encouraged. This is time that we want to have fellowship in the law. My story is called One Call, Many Great Stories.